we have discussed the three phase abc ac signals to alpha beta ac signals and we have also discussed transforming alpha beta that is the two phase ac signals to the dq domain dq dc signals now we should also be able to transform in the reverse direction dq to alpha beta alpha beta to abc so we will uh, see a look at the uh, reverse transformation so first let us see how to go about doing dq to alpha beta that is dc domain to two phase ac domain we know that a vector in the alpha beta coordinate is given by vector in the dq coordinate system multiplied by a transformation factor e to the power of j rho where rho is the angle between the alpha beta coordinate system and the dq coordinate system this can be expanded as rd plus j r q cos rho plus j sin rho and uh, expanding it further you have rd cos rho minus r q sin rho this will be the real part and the imaginary part r d sin rho plus r q cos rho so this will represent r alpha this will represent r beta and you can say r alpha plus j r beta and therefore in the matrix form i can write r alpha r beta as follows and r d cos rho so cos rho will come in minus sin rho for the second term here and for r beta i will put in sin rho and cos rho and the vector input vector r d r q so knowing r d r q i can get r alpha r beta using this transformation matrix so this will provide you with a vector representation in the alpha beta coordinate system knowing the vector representation in the dq coordinate system you can visualize this let me draw the two coordinate system alpha beta coordinate system like this so the alpha and the beta and i will also draw the dq axis so this is the d and the orthogonal q now the dq coordinate system is displaced from the alpha beta coordinate system by an angle rho this rho can be a varying rho let us say it is varying at rho equal to omega t at 50 hertz frequency now consider that i have two vectors one rd along the d axis as shown and another rq along the q axis as shown now these two vectors rd and rq can be composed and you will get the resultant in this fashion now this resultant can be decomposed along resolved along the alpha beta coordinate axis so if you resolve it along the alpha axis project the resultant onto the alpha axis you will get r alpha project this along the beta axis you will get r beta so this r alpha r beta is what we want as the output having rd and rq as the input so that is what this transformation has done rd and rq is the input knowing this we will use this transformation and find out r alpha and r beta for this rho the angle between the d and uh, dq coordinate system and the alpha beta co coordinate system should be known now let us discuss how we transform a vector in the alpha beta coordinate to the three phase abc coordinate system now let us go by the graphical means it is easier to understand let me draw these two orthogonal axes alpha axis and the beta axis i will also draw the abc coordinate axis the three axes which are displaced 120 degrees apart so this is the a axis in line with the alpha axis 
this is the B axis this is the C axis so the B axis is 120 degrees or 2 pi by 3 displaced from the A axis B C axis is 4 pi by 3 or 240 degrees displaced from the A axis now take an arbitrary vector and this vector let us resolve it around the alpha beta coordinates and you have here alpha and beta as shown now let us say this these vectors alpha r alpha r beta now these vectors have to be transformed into the abc coordinate system and they have to uh, uh, be converted into ra rb and rc vectors vectors along these three axes so how do you shift r alpha r beta to ra rb rc so now let us take first ra ra is a vector along a axis now what are the components of r beta and r alpha that are contributing to vectors along the a axis r alpha is contributing completely because alpha and a are aligned the beta axis is orthogonal to the alpha axis and therefore orthogonal to the a axis there is no component of r beta along the a axis therefore it is zero so component of beta is zero so r a is equal to r alpha now what is the component along the b axis r b now r alpha component along the b axis now let us say you project r alpha onto the b axis so this will be the projected value onto the b axis so now this component here as i am showing in the cursor will be the component contributed by r alpha by its projection onto the b axis it is falling on the negative portion of the b axis now this angle is 60 degrees how is it 60 degrees you see that we know that b is displaced from the a axis this angle is 120 degrees therefore the remaining angle will be 60 degrees so therefore i can say the contribution of r alpha minus because it's on the minus axis minus r alpha cos pi by 3 or cos 60. now if you take the r beta r beta drop a perpendicular to the b axis so this component will be the r beta components projection on the b axis it is on the positive side so you can write r beta and this angle is 30 degrees because this is this overall is 120 degrees b axis from a axis beta is at 90 so this will be 30 so that is cos pi by 6 so r alpha minus cos pi by 3 is minus half pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 now rc what is the rc vector so let us take the projection of r alpha onto the c axis so this is the component and this angle is 60 degrees so r alpha cos pi by 3 now this is falling on the negative part of the c axis so therefore the minus then projection of r beta onto the c axis this is the r beta component and that is again falling on the negative part of the axis minus r beta cos of pi by 6 because this portion is 30 degrees 
So now when you put the values for cos pi by 3 and cos pi by 6, you get r alpha minus 1 by 2 plus r beta into minus root 3 by 2. Now there is another important point that you have to note. Remember that while we converted or while we transformed the vectors from the ABC to alpha beta and when the ABC amplitudes or let us say unit amplitudes that is the sine waves the three 120 degree phase shifted sine waves RA, RB, RC are having unit amplitudes then the amplitude that resulted was 3 by 2 in the alpha beta domain. So we have to make when you do the reverse transformation when you are having a value 1 in the alpha beta domain it will be 2 by 3 in the ABC domain. So to make that correction you can multiply each of the vectors by 2 by 3 because now R alpha if it is 1 amplitude and it multiplied by 2 by 3. So each of them is multiplied by 2 by 3 to bring in that factor of 3 by 2 which, uh, um, which comes in when you are transforming from ABC to alpha beta domain because of the uh, algebraic addition. A unit sign will become 3 by 2 amplitude sign in the alpha beta coordinate system. Likewise, when you do the reverse transformation, a unit sign in the alpha beta coordinate system will become 2 by 3 times uh, the amplitude in the ABC coordinate system. So now when you put it into the matrix form, so what I need is RA, RB, RC and what is the transformation matrix you can look at it now r alpha into 2 by 3 so i will put 2 by 3 r beta component 0 now minus 1 by 2 into 2 by 3 will be minus 1 by 3 and root 3 by 2 into 2 by 3 will be 1 by root 3 this will be minus 1 by 3 and minus 1 by root 3 so this gets multiplied by alpha and beta. So this will be our transformation matrix for converting a vector in the alpha beta coordinates, the resolved components R alpha and R beta can be converted into the three phase AC quantities RA, RB, RC using this transformation matrix. So now summarizing, you can say first we know a, how to do ABC to alpha beta transformation. ABC is three phase AC sign. Alpha beta is two phase AC wave shapes. So three phase AC to two phase AC transformation. Next alpha beta to DQ. So what do we do? Alpha beta is two phase AC. DQ is rotating along with the vector, keeping in pace with the vector. Therefore the vectors projected on the DQ coordinate system will appear DC. So it becomes two phase DC domain. So this is the forward transformation can also have the reverse transformation dq to alpha beta the dq to alpha beta dq to alpha beta the dc quantities in the dq coordinate system get converted to two phase ac quantities in the alpha beta coordinate system so it is a two phase dc to two phase ac transformation now the fourth one is from alpha beta to ABC. That's what we just last did. Alpha beta is two phase AC to three phase AC. So if you take um, a set of variables, signals 
let us say sinusoidal signal three phase sinusoidal signals 120 degrees apart you can go through the whole process of going to two phase two phase to dc and then dc to two phase ac two phase ac to three phase ac back by using these transformations now these are the transformation these are the core transformation that will be used in the dq axis control for grid connection we will now go back to the grid connected inverter three phase grid connected inverter and see how we will apply these transformations there